Oh my gosh, 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 Did you see that part where Luna was like Discord's all like and Celestia is like Princess Twilight. And then and then Okay. Glad we got that out of our systems. Let's do this thing. Right off the bat, I'm gonna call this the second best two-part episode in the show, right after the return of Harmony. In terms of concept and execution, it stands high above most of the show's plot and adventure-centric arcs. This is the first time MLP seems to be sure-handedly setting out to deliver a narrative and establish a firm continuity. It does so through a number of surprisingly welcome retcons, showing that the writers may have recognized some of the plot incongruencies of the previous seasons and sought to more firmly establish a core narrative moving forward. I know a lot of us were hoping that Twilight's flight scene at the end of Magical Mystery Cure was some kind of weird fluke, as Sequestry Girls seem to establish. The writers have delivered on tying Twilight's wings into her new character arc of learning to be a proper ruler. There's also a sense of subtly rebooting the Discord Redemption arc from its original rushed form into a more broad take towards proper reformation. If we subbed out the end of Keep Calm and Flutter On, where Discord seems to have made a full change of heart, and imagine a more subtle attempt to play along, his attitude in the new season is closer to what would result. He still seems to be tricky and mysterious, with a sense that he's not really reformed at heart, but has the potential to be. Letting him off of the Elements of Harmony's leash will mean a much more interesting character arc, and he might even get to be reformed as a recurring character, exactly as I said he should have been in the first place place. If they deliver on the Discord narrative I've always wanted, I'm going to be fucking ecstatic. The plot developments surrounding the journey for the Six Keys also suggest a lot more adventure to come in this season. We'll probably be seeing many new locations across Equestria. Moreover, the Six Keys storyline suggests that each pony will have their own little adventure to get their own key. This is great because, historically, the show's adventure arcs tend to focus on Twilight Sparkle, so now each pony should get their own adventure in the limelight. Say it with me, folks. Full season story arc. I'm actually kind of surprised at how hype I am for this concept, since, as I'm sure you know, usually I'm not a fan of the adventure arcs, but that's usually due to pacing. If they can keep a continuing narrative going for the entire season, though, time constraints shouldn't be an issue anymore. I'm hoping they'll be able to pull this off. The premiere episodes altogether carried this big sense of fresh beginnings. These retcons and story structure setups lay the groundwork of a stronger season-long narrative. The whole episode deals with looking back both on what's happened before in the series and even looking back into the history of Equestria, as if the show were setting its past affairs in place so that it can cast off into new territory. The arc of learning the magic of friendship is over. Twilight is an alicorn now, so the questions are, how does friendship persist? What happens when friends begin to change and grow into their adult roles. In this episode, we see the first signs of Twilight stepping into her role as a princess, as well as the first glimpses and worries about how this could affect the group dynamic. Altogether, this premiere has laid an amazing groundwork for the season to come, along with being a superb episode in its own right. Don't you agree, Tom? Yeah. Tom? Hmm? I feel like there's something you're not telling me. No, it's nothing! This episode's great! I'm really excited for season four! Tom... <sighs> Up until they entered the Everfree Forest, the pacing was the best it's ever been in a My Little Pony story-driven episode. And then... it... It's okay, Tom. You can say it. This is a safe place. <sighs> the pacing went to shit. Friendship is Magic has a long history of dropping the ball in the third act when it comes to these multi-part stories, and while the issue is less distracting here than it was in the main six first foray into the Everfree, it does still stumble a bit. I think the problem for me stems from an emotional disconnect due to, yet again, poor pacing. The entire first episode of this arc subtly leads up to this confrontation that happens in the Everfree Forest, with the Remain Five continually showing they still haven't come to terms with Twilight being a princess, and are still trying to figure out how to handle her new position. When shit gets real, they no longer see her as just their friend, but now as an important asset to all of Equestria, and begin weighing this aspect into their decision making, hence their suggestion to Twy to stay in Ponyville, lest something happen to her as well. Dejected, Twilight takes off, but Discord of all characters convinces her to reunite with her friends. The problem is that this series of events in the episode barely takes longer to play out than my quick summary. We go from confrontation, to sadness, to rekindled vigor in the span of two minutes. And as a result, none of these emotional states have any time to establish themselves and resonate with the viewer, so this entire segment, that's supposed to be the emotional crux of this story arc, completely falls flat and carries very little weight. It's okay, Tom. It's okay. No episode is perfect. Except Apple Buck season. And suited for success? That one too. You saw it too though, right? Surely you recognize some flaws. 
but of course. The episode's emotional climax happens way too quickly and has almost no kick. The overprotectiveness and increased regard for Twilight is established early on, but it doesn't pay off in a meaningful way. Twilight's friends had a legitimate point with their argument in the forest, but it wasn't explored with any depth. If there's a lesson in this episode, I didn't learn it, and all the callbacks to season 1, while cool, didn't amount to much emotionally. I also thought the magical plot device potion was straight out of nowhere. There could have at least been some form of subtle foreshadowing of Zakora's appearance or even of the potion itself. You'd think Twilight would worry about her secondary mentor's safety considering her home is in danger. However, as you said during our simultaneous live tweet extravaganza, the contrivance was worth it for the plot developments. And let's take a moment to touch on those badass plot elements. Holy balls, he's alive again. This arc was jam-packed with tons of world building and fleshed out a lot of the lore that the series has referenced and touched upon over the last three seasons, but never really got around to going into. The most obvious instances of this are the flashbacks that Twilight was privy to as a result of the plot device potion. Getting a glimpse at Everfree in its prime, seeing the battle of Nightmare Moon versus Celestia, with a DBZ style energy wave clash no less, and even a look at Discord's downfall in the beginning of the Celestial Sisters' reign were all awesome bits of lore that finally have some legitimate grounding from the show itself. However, I think by far the most interesting point on display was the Tree of Harmony. My mind just started going in a billion different directions with this thing. The fact that the elements weren't just an ancient artifact that the Celestial Sisters discovered without consequence just makes the elements themselves so much more interesting. Their retrieval was a conscious act of desperation. They were the only weapons powerful enough to take on Discord, and yet it seems that Celestia and Luna knew that removing them from the tree was a risk, knowing that it would be weakened as a result. The duo intentionally chose long-term consequence in order to provide short term results. The elements were a gambit, not just mere objects of inconsequential salvation. The episode begins answering a question I didn't even think the show would even bother attempting to address, the source of magic in Equestria. The Tree of Harmony is, by all accounts, the most powerful living thing in the world of My Little Pony. It's not only what keeps the magic of the Everfree Forest at bay, but also what produced the elements of harmony themselves, up until this point, inconquerable magical artifacts. The existence of the tree goes a long way to humble the Celestial Sisters, and Alicorns in general, as they are much smaller in scale than what we may have first expected. Celestia and Luna had nothing to do with the creation or even the unlocking of the elements. They were merely borrowing the power of a superior force. Another interesting question to consider, if Discord, the reigning creature at the time of this occurrence, is the spirit of chaos, is the tree the spirit of harmony, and thus Discord's opposite? MLP seems to imply that there are two forces in its universe, chaos and harmony. Discord, obviously, is the representation of chaos, and up until this point, it seemed that Celestia and Luna were harmony, and then the main six once the elements passed to them. However, the tree itself is stronger than all of these characters combined. The cast that we've been following for the past three seasons aren't the embodiments of Harmony, merely its agent. If this is the case, then it may also explain why the elements of Harmony were effective against Discord when nothing else was. The ruling sisters took the tree of Harmony's fruit and used the spirit of Harmony's power against its inverse. Discord, the spirit of chaos. Cool story, bro. You know what I really loved about this ep? The presentation. <laughs> you would. Not that I disagree. Friendship is Magic has looked great from day one, but there's been a marked progression of quality as it goes along. The season 4 premiere has been polished to a mirror shine that could contend with some of the best looking hand drawn shows on TV. The Celestia and Luna models seem to have been subtly touched up, and there's a very grand sense of framing that pervades even more of the episode than usual. The effects are totally badass, with scene after scene of unique and atmospheric lighting. These are easily the most visually tonal episodes of the show. And can I reiterate that up until the unfortunate Everfree Forest scenes, the episode has this amazingly natural flow like nothing the series has ever achieved. One of the show's strong points has always been to contain very fast jokes and character moments that don't break the flow of the episode, often happening on the other part of the screen from whoever's talking. There's this scene in front of the town hall in part one that shows all the characters interacting so naturally that I had to take a step back and remember that this is a thing which a team of people made and not just an organically occurring situation. Mmm, indeed. Hey, you know what I love? I love how Applejack and Rarity get the most support dialogue in this episode. You know, the roles they've always been best to fill. You know what I love? How all the dudes in this episode sound like they eat gravel for breakfast and lunch. You know what I love? How Spike is slowly turned into the deadpan version of Pinkie Pie with his fourth wall breaks and access to hammer space. You know what I love? I love how Twilight's freakouts now have altitude. You know what I love? My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. You know what I love? All of you. 
Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more weekly videos on both of our channels as we analyze My Little Pony Friendship is Magic Season 4. My Little Pony, My Little Pony, ah, My Little Pony, I used to wonder what friendship could be. So, here's a question for you guys. Now that the elements of harmony are gone, there's nothing to stop Discord from going back to his previous ways and raining chaos all over Equestria. With that in mind, do you think they'll have an episode when he actually does revolt, or will his friendship with Fluttershy keep him in check regardless of there being no elements anymore? Let me know in the comments below.